We have a lot of cool stuff planned for season three. Being proud of who you are no matter what you do. You definitely see the characters progress a lot more. They start growing up. And I think Ginger and Darren are endgame. It is a masterpiece of an episode. Oh, it's the cattiest moment in the history of television. Trust me, everybody has been excited for our thoughts on it. Who's the girl in the pink capri? It's Courtney! It's Courtney! Someone once told me the grass is much greener on the other side. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another bonus podcast of We're In Between. Uh, we discuss an episode of As Told by Ginger once a week, every week. And here with us today is David Jeremiah, the voice of Dr. Dave on As Told by Ginger. So thank you so much for being with us, David. Oh, my pleasure, you guys. No, this, this is great. Right before we discuss about um, As Told by Ginger, so where did you get your influences for acting? Well, uh, I didn't even know I was an actor until um, until the IRS told me that I was a voice actor <laughs> many, wow. many years ago. So, so there's my inspiration. No, I um, I started uh, I started out as a singer, and uh, I was singing a jingle many years ago in in Seattle for Red Robin restaurants a thousand years ago, and there was only five of them. I, I sang the jingle, and then they said, "Hey, can you read that that talking part?" And I thought, "Well, I, I guess. I mean, that can't be that hard." So I did. And it turns out I was I was good at it, and I had no idea that I was good at it. So I started doing commercials, and then then animation came along, and uh, yeah, it's what I've been doing for thirty four years now. The whole idea of being a voice person is much like being a singer. I mean, it's all about tempo and and pitch and timing and delivery, and that's exactly what voice acting is. That's exactly what acting is, I guess. But um, yeah, that's that's how I got into it, and uh, and I continue today. That's awesome. That's great. It seems like most people from the cast have continued on in arts and entertainment in some way, even if not voice acting. So that's cool that that, that you you're still doing it to this day. Yeah, isn't that wild? It's very different today in that it used to be that um, you know it was a, it was a uh, a group of people who saw each other every day. I mean the the voice community. We saw each other every day. We went to lunch with each other. We ran into each other at auditions and at the agent's office and at the casting director's office and on jobs. And uh, now everybody sits in a closet at home uh, by themselves and <laughs> does it. You know, it's like, I mean, literally, I have, a, I have a studio in my house that's quite nice, but I crawl off into a little closet to, uh, to, uh, to do my voice work. It's pretty funny. Interesting. Is that like for better sound quality and less echo? Yeah, that's that's exactly it. I mean, my studio in my house is is it for you know I, I call it a closet. It's a vocal booth. I mean, that's really what it is. Hmm. But I mean, it, it's about the size of a closet, so I call it the closet. Sure, but uh, sure. yeah, to cut cut down on uh, you know any uh, extemporaneous is that the word I want? Extra noise. That's fine. <laughs> I think extraneous, maybe. Oh yeah, maybe that's the word. Yeah, see, <laughs> right. yeah. I can talk. I just can't read and think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's great. That's really interesting. And I uh, I see, if you don't mind, Patricia, just diving into questions here. Sure, go ahead. Uh, I see you've done a lot of video game work, and I'm curious how that's different from animation and like voice over stuff that you've done. Well, uh, I, I, I gotta be honest with you, I don't do much video work anymore because it's too taxing. It's too physically taxing. In other words, for instance, like on a, on a video game, uh, oh, let me put it this way. On like on, on, on an animation, like as told by Ginger, there's a script. There's uh, the writers have delivered, you know, the writers have delivered a line to you and you're going to deliver the line back to them, hopefully the way that they wanted it. Mm -hmm. With a video game, uh, there's so many different outcomes, you know, like your character might live on to the next episode or you might die. Um, you might die from getting hit by a hammer. You might die from falling off of a building. So uh, there's, there's 80 different ways for you to scream, and you have to scream those 80 different ways. And literally, after eight hours of yelling, it just at some point you just go, you know what, guys, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Cause literally, totally. Because literally, you'd, you'd, you'd go in on a Monday to do a video game, 
and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, you had no voice left, so you couldn't work. Right. So, yeah. So it was but, just. I mean, it was literally too physically taxing. There was there was literally no voice left at the end of the day. That makes a lot of sense, but like to the lay person, it really sounds like oh, you just go in and do some grunts and yells, and then you get out. That must be really easy. But you're so right that that must be very draining. Well, it's it's funny because they'd say, okay, now you're being hit in the head with a hammer. You go, oh. <laughs> okay, now you're being hit in the head with uh, a piece of wood, and you go, oh. Well, now they're hitting you on the right side of your face. Ah! Now you're being wow. like, you know? I mean, it's just, I mean, literally, that that's how it went. That's so cool. But, it, like, that sounds like it would be really annoying for you. But process-wise, that's so interesting. The delivery of the lines was fun. But mm -hmm. then, you know, when it came time to do the reactions, it was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I worked on, um, for Lucasfilms, I worked on... I forget what the name of the video game was, but I played a member of the Huttese race. In mm -hmm. other words, Jabba the Hutt was a, a member of the Huts, you know, and they were a race of uh, particular aliens, and they called them Huttese. Well, there were two guys that came up with this language that the Huts actually spoke, you know. Oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what the, the thing was, is there were two linguists that came up with this Huttese language. And if you and I learned Huttese, we could speak to each other and and understand each other. Huh. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool. But by the time this um, this particular episode had rolled around, these two linguists were both dead in real life. And... So they had to phonetically spell out every single syllable for all of us that played huts. Oh. And here we are talking to each other, having no idea what we're saying to each other, <laughs> but just reading one syllable at a time and trying to make it sound good. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, going into As Told by Ginger, so um, when you were making the auditioning for As Told by Ginger, were there any other characters that you read for besides Dr. Dave? No, he was the only one. And... um when I saw his face and I read his lines, I went, well, I know exactly how this guy's supposed to talk. And yeah. Yeah. You know, it was like, it was like there was, there were, there were no other choices. There was, that was the choice that I made when I went into the uh, interview and uh, the audition. And I'm not sure that they had, that they had pictured him in this, in the way that he ended up being. No, they didn't. But, his hair was actually a lot lighter. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I, I mean, just, he was just like a minor character in Hello, Stranger, and we wouldn't see him again until Miss Foutley's Boys, and then throughout season three, he became a major character. It was fun. It was, I was thrilled to see him become such a, uh, uh, such a uh, well, a, a bigger character. They're thrilled to see him become that. Well, because I had, you know, because I, I loved doing the job, and there were so many cool people. I mean, you'd walk into the studio, and there, there were, you know, there were cool people on the set every every time. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like Lorraine Newman and Melissa Disney, Jackie Harris Greenberg, um, Aspen Vincent, um, Chris Bring Summer. It. You know who the coolest one was? Who? Ben Stein. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. He was the coolest. I was really interested in his in, in him and his career. And I mean, remember, remember the character that he played in Ferris Bueller? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, was, of course. He was, he was the, <laughs> right. Yeah. He was the same guy. It was exactly the same guy. And I said, <laughs> I said, I heard a rumor about you. And he goes, yes, what was that? And I said, I heard that you were a speechwriter for President Nixon. He goes, Nixon and Ford. Did you guys know that? Yes, yes, we did. But we actually discussed about that briefly when we were discussing about his debut episode. Did you talk to him on the episodes? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that would be so great if we ever got a hold that of Ben Stein. Oh yeah, he's such a cool guy. And uh, yes, he goes. He goes. Uh, President Nixon and Ford. And I said, well, how did you get that job? He says, I'd love to tell you I'm a great speechwriter, but my father worked in Washington. <laughs> Awesome. I don't know if I could even interview him with a straight face. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, especially it's since, in, you know, not to you know be insulting of him, but you know, every time that you see him in a movie, he's always playing like a businessman or um, you know, like a professor or something. 
Yeah, he's a brilliant guy in real life. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He had, like, a, a quiz game show. Um, mm -hmm. He made a lot of speeches. Yeah, he was, mm -hmm. a, you know, a really prominent actor, absolutely. Yeah, the show brought together a lot of interesting people. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, Casey, do you, have another, do you have a question? In the scene, I, there were multiple scenes, right, with Carl and Ginger's biological father and Dr. Dave. I'm wondering if you were... Uh, in the same room when you guys recorded those scenes because they were really well done and what that was like sort of finding the awkwardness there because th it was very intentionally awkward yeah it was great it was great awkward um yeah we were all in the we were pretty much all in the room um for most of the episode mm -hmm. yeah it, that was the fun part of it so many uh, things were done you know all by yourself but no we were all gathered around the microphones in the room and there was very little rehearsal it was it was just a, but yeah the the I remember that awkwardness and it was it was just fun it was just it was funny and fun yeah yeah I, I, actually that was um actually that was a question from one of our listeners in the forums Pink Dolphin ninety two on what was it like recording that episode boy I wish I could be more specific I should actually probably go back and watch it but I do I do remember uh, I do remember the awkwardness and there, you know what the funny part of it was is. We we both knew that we were supposed to be awkward, yeah. and and this was a weird situation. So it was really easy to do. It was just it was just really easy. It was fun. Sure, sure, absolutely. What was the episode? Let me ask. Let me ask you a question. Sure. I remember Doctor Dave blowing up a turkey once. <laughs> yes. In the th is that what episode was that? Ten chairs. It's the the Thanksgiving episode. <laughs> Thanksgiving episode. And it sort of is the peak of that awkwardness you were just talking about, because Ginger decides it'd be a good idea to just, like, invite everyone in her life, regardless of where they stand with other people in the room. Uh, so there's a lot of tension there. Yeah, it was. And then to have uh, Dr. Dave, I just remember him blowing up the turkey. And I remember when we got to the script, I went, the turkey blew up? <laughs> <laughs> And isn't it somehow Carl's fault? I already forgot. Yeah, yeah it, it was Carl's fault. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Dave, of course, being swagger, you know. So uh, what, were you, what were your favorite behind-the-scenes uh, moments when, uh, you know, voicing Dr. Dave or interacting with any of the writers or the voice actors on the show, besides Ben well, Stein? I, I love <laughs> Melissa Disney. I love her. Anyway, um, and we, we've run, I haven't run into her in a long time, but years ago you know like i say when we were out running around doing stuff all over town um I, I would run into her quite quite a bit and i really like liked her a lot you know who i got to meet on this was uh niecy nash she, she was obviously not as big uh, in those days as she is now but she, i just loved her i thought she was fantastic and then we ran into each other at a, at a studio in boston and we talked about ginger for a little bit and uh, what she was awesome. Uh, ben Stein was awesome. Lorraine Newman. It's like, really? I, I grew up, you know, watching Saturday Night Live with Lorraine Newman, and uh, and she 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 was such a nice person to be around. And I mean, she was interested in my career, and it's like I'm thinking, why why would you be interested in me? I'm just I'm just a peon actor that's coming in to do this Doctor Dave part. But she really took this. She really took a, a liking to me and an eye to her, and it was great. She was awesome. Yeah, I think one of the highlights for me with uh, both of you guys was when you were singing Diamonds Are Expensive from the episode um, about Face, where, you, where <laughs> Dr. Dave proposes to Lois. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know what's funny? I, I, remember, I remember running through the song because neither one of us had rehearsed it. <laughs> and it, yeah, it was actually pretty funny. It was actually pretty funny. I... I, I I imagine it would be very, very funny to watch the two of us doing that uh, song uh, when it actually happened. Right. Because it was like, it was like, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> what? What's that again? What are, what are we supposed to be singing? It was pretty fun. Pretty fun. Oh, oh, awesome. I can imagine. Um, yeah, do you have any other questions, Casey? Uh, I'd be interested because apparently I'm just stealing questions from our listeners. Why don't we get to those and then see if I have any others? Sure. Okay, so we have a question from that Miss Quinn who said, um, First, I want to say I love the Dr. Dave character. His relationship with Carl as the show progressed warmed my heart and is my favorite relationship in the entire show. I wish there would have been more interactions with, between him and Ginger to make their relationship more meaningful. 
Were you happy with the plot of the wedding frame? There was so much of Dr. Dave in it, and I'm wondering if you felt he was used to his full potential. I would have liked Dr. Dave to come back more from a financial standpoint. Um, geez, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened in that, in that episode. Help me, would you? Sure. Um, let's see. Um, Dr. Dave and Lois were uh, preparing the wedding. They were right. trying to break, uh, his mom was trying to break them up by um, hiring uh, Nikki Laporte, who portrayed as his old girlfriend from college. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it turned out that that wasn't um, his old girlfriend. It was just a transvestite that his mom hired because she didn't like Lois. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, that was actually pretty funny, wasn't it? It was hilarious. It was if we didn't. I never. I didn't even see that coming when I first saw that episode. I was like, "What?" <laughs> oh, not at all. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Uh, I, to answer your question, what what was the uh, the listener's uh, name? Um, that Miss Quinn. That Miss Quinn. To answer your question, uh, as an actor, I would have loved to have seen Doctor Dave come back more. Um, but uh, I think he pretty much, you know, I think it, as far as the story goes, I think he pretty much covered the bases. Sure. Um, we have a question from Norbert who said, Hi, David. Did you find it odd at all that Dr. Dave only appeared in one episode of season one with Hello Stranger, but then becomes a lot more prominent in seasons two and three? Did you think you were just playing a one-off character, and were you surprised to find out that your character would play a bigger role later on in the show? Oh, yeah. Yes to both of those. Um, yeah, I was I was hired as a one-off character. Um mm. And I honestly, I when they called me back for more episodes, I remember the director saying, hey, we liked your character, so we were writing him in more. I thought, wow, that's awesome. I love hearing stories about that in Hollywood anyway. Like, I'm a big uh, Breaking Bad fan. I don't know if you guys paid attention to Breaking Bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. The fact, Absolutely. The fact that Mike, you know, Mike, who's a huge character by the end, he was a day player. Uh, he was hired as a day player, much like I was hired as a day player for wow. Dr. Day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the the first time you see Mike in Breaking Bad is when him and Jesse have that interaction where he's cleaning the house up. Do you remember that? I do. And they wanted to kill off Jesse at the end of season one, but Aaron Paul was just so good. The fact that they called me back to continue Dr. Dave, I was thrilled. And I don't know if you guys paid any attention to um, Higley Town Heroes. It was a Disney uh, animated series. I remember many, it many years ago. It was these Weebles Wobbles characters that fall. <laughs> and and I, I played gra I played Grandpapa in, in the series. I had a, a voice just like this, and and I played an eighty five year old man. <laughs> well, the woman that played the eighty five year old grandmother was uh, Betty White. No way! And, yeah. Wow. It was, it was me and Betty White, and I, I I asked the director. I said. If you hired an 80-year-old woman to play an 80-year-old woman, I said, how come you didn't, you know, I was 30-something at the time. I said, how come you hire some 30-year-old guy to, to play, you know, an 85-year-old uh, grandpa? She says, well, she says, originally you were just hired as a day player ringer. She said, we just needed somebody to read the lines. <laughs> and, and it turns out I came back for the whole rest of the series. And wow. I played grandpa, but, but that was the same way with Dr. Dave. I was literally hired as a day player and... And that was it. And I thought, okay, well, see you guys later. Nice to talk to you. And, uh, and they called me back. That's awesome. And crazy that that happened twice to you. That's hilarious. We have a question from Nick Nagel who said, Hi, David. My question for you is, did you like Dr. Dave's mom as a character? <laughs> Dr. Dave's mom seemed like she was kind of nasty. Yes. Don't you think? Yes. Very much so. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Nick, obviously, Doctor Dave would have would have been torn because she was nasty. She was a nasty character, but he loves her, you know. Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously, in real life, if that were to be the situation in your life, you'd you'd be torn, you know. So I I suppose that's the way I played it. And when he found out that his mom was the one who was behind the whole sabotage, it made it look like he never wanted to see her again. Yeah, you wonder what happened after the end of As Told by Ginger, like in that fictional world. You know, I've never even thought about that, yeah. to be honest with you. Because, <laughs> I mean, finding out that your mom tried to thwart your own wedding is pretty hard to bounce back yeah, I would from. Imagine, yeah, 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 I would imagine, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Nick also said, I want to let you know you did an amazing job voicing such a nice, caring man. You are awesome. Ah, uh, bless your heart, Nick. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, we have a question from Bibi, who said, 
What is your favorite episode in the whole series and why? Blowing up the turkey. Absolutely <laughs> blowing up the turkey. <laughs> I just loved the whole concept of it. It was just yeah. great. <laughs> okay. Yep. Awesome. Thanks, BB. Uh, we have a question from... We already answered this question from or, uh, Oreo Jellyfish. We already answered this one. What did you think of the Diamonds Are Expensive song that was played in the episode about face? Yeah, we answered that one. It was a... It was a... I, would, I, wish, I wish you all could have seen the actual recording of it. That's all I'll say. It was just great fun. Uh, it was like, it, I mean, I, I remember, remember us looking at each other like, what's going on here? Are we really singing this song for real? Yeah, it was great. Which is kind of in character. Like, I imagine that helped with the final product. I bet you're right. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, those are all the questions from all of our followers. So again, everybody, thank you so much for all of your amazing questions. Yeah, very cool. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, um, do you have any other questions, Casey? Or, or do you think we could mm -hmm. probably wrap things up? I think I'm about ready to wrap things up. The listeners covered things pretty well. The, I mean, I, I could certainly go more in-depth about the video game stuff, but that is not what our listeners come here for, unfortunately. Uh, but that was all really interesting. Yeah, give me a call sometime when you want to talk about that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so um, our final question, and we always ask this to everyone that we've had on the show, what do you think of the legacy of As Told by Ginger as a whole? I think you saw a lot of real people in the characters. And uh, uh, would you agree with that? Yes, we've, we've talked about that many times, actually, yeah. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that'd be the, cool, the coolest thing to, uh, as far as the legacy would go, is... is you know, they were very, very real characters, and and I think we made I think we made them real. I think I think each one of us took on took on the role that we had to play, and the role that we were being paid to play, and and made it something that we would have played whether you were paying us or not. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, it feels like because we've talked to people on all levels of production of this show in terms of writers, directors, voice actors, and uh, animators, and everyone has this level of care for the show that they admit they didn't always have for every project they've done in your career because you can't you just can't give everything what you give to those kind of dream projects yeah very true i mean some days you go in on autopilot but uh right there wasn't this in, in ginger there wasn't this there wasn't a moment of autopilot it was all very very it was all very cool for sure yeah. absolutely good stuff well um david uh, i want to say thank you so much for coming on by we really do appreciate it Oh, my pleasure. I look forward to talking to you guys again. Absolutely. So um, right before we go, do you have anything to plug or self-promote? <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, no. <laughs> I just, I, just uh, I go to work every day and, uh, and something like this comes along and just makes me smile once in a while. And I'm, I'm just thrilled. Nope, nothing to plug. Nothing, I, I suppose my wife would say, well, why didn't you plug this and why didn't you plug that? But uh no, I'm just thrilled to uh, be able to spend a few minutes with you guys, and uh, this is neat. I mean, I, I, I rarely get to do stuff like this, and uh, you know, I, I show up, I show up in my office every day, and do some voice some commercials and whatnot, and uh, for something like this to come along is a real treat. Nice. So, if any of our listeners have any commercials that they're about to film, uh, you know who to call. That's yes. right. <laughs> yes, absolutely, and uh, I, I, I know that you already do have a website. I do, davidjeremiah.com. So yeah, um, if any of you guys are interested in what uh, David uh, has done, uh, the thousands of commercials that he's done, as well as uh, all the video games and all the cartoons, then you can go check that out. And Yeah, very cool. All right, well, um, thank you so much for everybody for listening. Let us know in the comments below about what are your favorite moments featuring Dr. Dave, what were your favorite episodes, and um, what were your favorite, um, you know, animated series or, or, um, or video games or what have you that David's been a part of. That's it. Hope to see you around soon, and thank you for listening. Hey.